welcome to Training Thursdays. Uh, I hope you can all see my screen now. Um, we thought we'd kick it off with an intro into Power Apps. Um, I'm James Bai. I'm the technical architect here at Convedo. Um, and yeah, today we're just gonna simply have a little look at Power Apps. Uh, we're gonna look at a basic build of an app, show how it's built and some of the features that might interest you. Um, the interest of time, as we've only got kind of half an hour, um, it's a bit of a kind of Blue Peter style. So, you know, we won't be building this hat from the, uh, the ground up. We've kind of got, here's one I've made earlier sort of style. Um, okay, so what exactly are we gonna be covering today? So first of all, what is the app we're going to build? Um, so here at Convedo, we used to do a one-on-one -on -one, uh, lunch meeting at Wednesdays at 1pm. One, um, 1 so it used to be a good way, we're all working remotely, to just have a little chat with each other and kind of get to know each other a little bit better, even though we may not be in the same office building. So what exactly does that have to do with you? Why do you care? Well, the idea here is really because it's a basic app, we get to showcase you some really fairly basic Power Apps functionality and kind of introduce you a bit to the Power Platform. So here are the key points that we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover, first of all, Canvas apps. Uh, we are gonna cover data first tables and power automate scheduled cloud flows. Okay, so I'm gonna then share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that now. Okay. So first of all, where are we in Power Apps? So inside Power Apps, we're actually in a solution currently. Um, and what I generally do when I create a Power App is I like to start from the solution and build it up within a single solution. So what exactly is a solution? It's basically a grouping of all of the components um, that you are building for your Power App. In particular, um, it allows you to export these solutions, change certain parts of it, um, all in a very handy kind of way. So I would normally go here and go to an app and today, what we're gonna do is we're gonna build a Canvas app. So why a Canvas app and why not one of these others? The Canvas apps are the not necessarily data-driven apps. So here you can see you've got a model-driven app. So you may decide we really just wanna be looking at some data. So a model-driven app would be perfect for that. You can do absolutely really nice um, presentations of the data, analysis, that kind of stuff a page, so a page would allow us to basically do very something very similar as a web page. Um, but today, what we want to do is we want a Canvas app. And I'm not actually gonna build a new one here, I'm gonna just simply show you what I've already built. Okay, so this is the Power Apps Editor. Um, maybe a little bit scary, maybe not if you're used to low code editors, uh, but it's quite similar to most of them. So on the side here, we've got our options here. Um, you can see the tree view of our UI elements here from the tree view. Uh, and then you can see the properties of everything we select. So let's have a look at the UI itself. So how is this built and what does it kind of look like? 
uh, when we're actually using it. So in order to actually see what it would look like, we can preview this app and we can see it's actually reactive. We can have a look on the phone, we can have a look on the tablet, and we can also see from our browser. Now, how have we created a reactive app here? The first thing I've done is I've created a container, and the way you would do this is you would go to your screen here, and you would click Insert, and under Layout, And out, we have, in this case, a vertical container. So the two different elements we've got within this vertical container are a horizontal container in which we've got a question here, and we've got a simple toggle. The other element we've got in the vertical container is the submit button. So the idea of this is basically to allow users to say whether they will be in attendance for our lunch meet meeting. So how does this go, this information, a yes or no, to a database or something where we can act upon it? In order to do this, we use data. And that's where tables come in. So in the solution, we can just add a simple data first table. Uh, but first of all, I should probably explain what the data first actually is, because it's the only thing we basically use for a storage solution in the Power Platform. Um, so the data first is basically a Microsoft Cloud-based storage solution for business data. Um, you've got access to all of your uh, Dynamics 365 apps data as they all sort of run on the data first as well. Um, and it's very easily easily used uh, <laughs> in Microsoft Excel. So you can use NADIN and you can integrate those two. So let's have a look here at our table in particular. So we've got our ID column. And here, what we've used is a auto number. So this will generate itself whenever we add something in. For the user, we've just got a simple text column. So that's my user here. And then we've got another user. And what we're going to basically be doing is having a look at when the week is starting in particular. Um, and then the Wednesday of that week, are we available? And once again, available is a simple text item. So there is a reason for this, that it isn't a Boolean. Um, we can actually see here, we can add Booleans, but these are in a special format when you import them into Power Apps and they act as choice items. So they're a little bit more difficult to uh, get the data out of and actually use inside Power Apps. So today we're just gonna use a simple text. So how do we access this data from our Power App. It's pretty simple. We literally go in here and we click on data. And here we've got lunch meet availabilities, which is our table in particular. We've got another one from when I was testing the app earlier. Um, and what are we exactly going to do with this data? How are we going to get the data out of the table? So what I've done in this particular app is I've used formulas. So under app here, we can go along here to formulas. And these are basically expressions that you want to use multiple times within your app, and you can just reference them. So here we've got get lunch meet item formula, and this is a lookup. So for Power Apps, you can use lookups to query collections of data. In this case, we've got a table and we are querying it based on the particular user that's logged in. And we are also querying it based on the start of this week. So that'll be the 17th. Okay, now what do we do 
if we don't get anything back, uh, we still want to edit this data and send it back to the database, uh, the data first in this case. And how are we going to do that? So what we can do is we can use a default. So I'm also declaring here under formulas, the lunch meat item. And if in the case that it's blank, what we get back from the lookup, we are going to use the defaults under lunch meat availabilities. And otherwise, we're simply going to use what we've looked up. OK. So what are we actually doing with this data once it's here? Um, one of the things we're doing is we're setting the default here. And we're looking at the lunch meat item formula. And we can actually see, in fact, if we go to variables here, and then we go to named formulas, what the values we've got are. So we view this particular record. So we can see available. They're currently not available. So lunch meat item formula dot available, in this case, is no on this side. And you can actually see if you click on it, the variable there. So we're changing this to a Boolean, and this no is displayed here. Now, what happens if we want to add to this data? Because when we submit, we obviously want the user to be able to say, yes, I am available. I want to talk to someone on Wednesday. Um, so the way in particular we're going to use today is called patch. Uh, there are other ways available, but this way is just a little bit simpler. So the on select property of this button contains this function here, patch. And this will add uh, to whatever particular properties you, uh, you specify. So it'll use whatever's already there. And you can just add a single property that you want to change. So in this case, we have to first say what source we have. So that's lunch meat availabilities. And we're then what we're replacing. So this is the current item. So lunch meat item formula. And these are all of the different values that we want to replace. Um, it's pretty simple. And here we're using the toggles value. And if that's true, then we'll have the item, the uh, tables value, columns value as yes. If it's false, we'll have it as no. So pretty simple there. And we can see, actually, let's have a look um, on this table. So at the moment, I am available. So if I submit this now, and what you can do to interact with your Power App is you can hold down Alt, and then you can actually interact with it. Otherwise, you're just clicking on the items. So if I want to submit no, we can then refresh this and we'll see, no, I don't want to actually have a lunch meet. Uh, in this case, I do. So actually, let's change it back to yes. OK, so we've got this data. Um, it's pretty useless right now. We're not doing anything with it. So this is where our power automate comes in. So in this case, what we've got here, um, we have a cloud flow. And you can actually see if we were to add a new one, we'd add an automation cloud flow. So what is a cloud flow in particular? Uh, it runs on the cloud, obviously, first off. Um, and there are different flows within Power Automate. So you can have a cloud flow, or you can have a desktop flow. And cloud flows are for things like joining systems together, anything that doesn't require a machine to do, um, it can be done in the cloud. So when I say a machine, I basically mean something like RPA. So if you need to go in um, and pretend you're a computer and go in and actually change some data, you'd use a desktop flow. We're not doing that. So we're using a cloud flow. And the type we're using is a scheduled flow because every Wednesday we're going to have a look at 12 o'clock, one hour before the meeting, and say, Who's up for a meeting? Let's schedule one. Okay, 
So I'll now show you our parallel sway flow. As you can see here, we've got an interview, interval of once a week, and it's on Wednesday at 12. So this will start off our cloud flow. Uh, we can currently actually test it manually, uh, but we'll get to that later. Okay, so how are we going to find out what users are available this week? Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually query the lunch meet availabilities. So here we've simply selected lunch meet availabilities, and we now have this filter. So this is using OData um, notation here to filter. Um, you can see that these columns are not actually exactly the same names as the columns we've got here. So we've got new underscore week start. And we also have new underscore available is yes. New underscore week start is this particular week. That's what this expression is doing here. So how do we find out what we're actually supposed to be putting in these filters for the OData? What we can do is we can have a look at the columns here. And then if we want to look, say, for available, new underscore available is here. So this is the actual name. Um, one thing to note, it is actually all lowercase in Power Apps, uh, but it's uppercase here. So if you were to query in mixed case here, you would actually find you don't get any data out of it. So let's have a look at the run history for this. Uh, I ran this earlier today, um, and we can basically see what came out. So here we've got our data. We can't really go into it much because it's in a pretty raw format, uh, but basically we are getting these items out. So the next thing we want to do is initialize a variable. So first, to use a variable in a flow, you've got to initialize them. And to do that, we use the flow item initialize variable. <laughs> um, so here we've got the variable available users. It's an array, and we've just started it. The reason we haven't done it inside this apply for each is because you can't actually put these initialized variables in any loops or inside uh, any kind of conditionals or anything like that. OK, so what are we doing with this apply for each? So for each row, we're getting the value of that row. And then what we want to do is append to our uh, array variable we've got here. Um, so available users, and we're just adding the user property or column. Pretty simple. So then what we're ending up with here is we're adding each individual. And you can go through and see for each loop what's happened. So there's only two loops, but we've added test at Conveyo, and we've added me at Conveyo. Now, what we want to do is we want to have one-to-one -one meetings. So we're going to split these up using a chunk function. And we're just going to make sure that they are split up to always have two people together. And this would look a little bit like this. So we've got an array, and then we've got another array with our two users in. Now, what we want to do for each of these meeting splits we've got here is to check a condition. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that there are two users inside each of these split up meetings. Because otherwise, you know, you, you don't really want a meeting to be created when you're the only user uh, for your lunch meet. Um, a little bit sad if you don't get a meeting created, but probably more sad if you do have a meeting created and you realize you're the only one once you've joined. After that, what we're going to then do, so if this is yes, great, we've got two people. We can make a one-to-one -one meeting. 
and we are going to use this Teams module. So I've signed in and I've connected my own Teams and this is using my calendar. We're just going to change the subject to work meet and the event message to test work meet. And we've set a starting and end time that will be the Monday uh, on the Wednesday rather. Uh, we've also added the required attendees. So for each of these, we use an item, which is the item for each meeting split. And we are joining this together into a string with these semicolons, because that's how the Teams module takes that input. Okay, right. So let's, uh, let's give it a run. So we can test here once we've saved and we can click manual. We'll run the flow and then we'll go to the testing page. Okay, brilliantly. The flow's run successfully. So I'm now gonna have a look at my uh, Teams and see if I've now got a meeting. is my first time using uh, the Zoom presenting. So I'm going to try and share my screen again of the Teams. And you can see here, we've simply just got a Teams meeting that's called Test Work Meet. Pretty simple. Okay, so now you've kind of got a bit of an idea of the kind of things we can actually do. Apologies. Let's go back to my uh, <laughs> PowerPoint. There we go. Hopefully you can all see it. So what are some of the actual advantages of using Power Automate other than some of them that we've gone over here. Okay, the first one is a pretty big one. Power Apps may already be included in your Microsoft license. So Power Apps can also can be included in, I think it's uh, Dynamics uh, 365 licenses. Uh, I think it's a particular one. Um, so if you want to have a go with it, you may actually be able to already. Um, although one of the things to note is that uh, the, for instance, the Teams module that I've used there uses a, a connection uh, that unfortunately is a premium connection. So you may have to use a trial uh, for Power Automate or have a user have a license for that premium. It's low code. Uh, so you can see it was pretty simple to actually create the UI um, and to actually create some of the flows. So you don't need to pay people a lot of money for high code uh, solutions. You can also nicely see how things are working and why things aren't working. Flexibility. So the Canvas app is pretty great because you don't have to have it backed by a particular, ah, apparently I'm not sharing my slides, apologies. Hopefully you can see them now. Um, so there's flexibility in it. Um, basically, you can create anything that the UI will let you. Um, you can also connect the Power Apps directly to the, uh, the Power Automate directly to the Power Apps. Um, so you can have a lot of flows run directly, uh, which is pretty great. And it integrates incredibly well with the Microsoft Suite. So whether that is getting your Dynamics 365 apps data or using some of the modules that you've already got for Teams, um, for Word, for OneDrive, SharePoint, it's incredibly good if you work mostly with Microsoft. 
One of the other additional advantages is that the access to these apps can be handled with uh, Azure Entra uh, or Azure AD as it may be. Um, so you can handle what groups are allowed access to particular apps. Um, just makes it a little bit more streamlined. Okay, uh, do we have any questions? Okay, it looks like we don't. Uh, so what's the only thing left to really say? Oh. Okay, I'll let, uh, let's see if anyone raises their hand. <laughs> okay, right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. And I hope to see you next time. Maybe someone else will be presenting. James, before you go, sorry for the delay. Um, one question here. So how do you see uh, this app in the market, like uh, competing with other workflow tools? Uh, do you see a strong potential customer base or how, do, how, how, how is the market now? Well, I think definitely um, Power Apps is gaining a bit of traction. The whole of the kind of Power Platform is. Um, so one of the great things with the Power Platform is that we haven't actually mentioned is Power BI and the ability to analyze your data and look at the data first, um, data with a lot of clarity. Um, but Power Apps just allows you to kind of interface with that sort of uh, business need a lot more efficiently. And it's really, once again, fantastic for those Microsoft integrations that you may need. Uh, it simplifies that an awful lot. So I think it really is, it comes down to how reliant as a company you are already on the Microsoft um, ecosystem. I think if you are, it's great. You can do with a lot mm -hmm. with it.